Puget Sound starts here. What are you talking about? It's just uh, some garbage. It's some litter. It's a Starbucks cup. Got some aluminum cans. Well, those are recyclable. So is all the paper. So is the napkins and the food scraps. It's all compostable. And those two plastic cups on the top, that's recyclable plastic. The whole thing's recyclable. Puget Sound starts here. No, that's just a garbage can. Puget Sound starts here. No, that's a traffic jam. That's me. The windshield wipers trying to beat back the rain not making the same rhythm as my music on the radio at all. It's starting to get kind of irritating sitting behind this pickup truck with its exhaust and the bus, the diesel bus right beside me and the traffic light is long red light. Puget Sound starts here. No, it's just a traffic jam. I'm trying to get home because I'm building a new house. Puget Sound starts here. <laughs> this is my new house. I've had to go through a lot of materials and stuff and I just throw it out in the front yard. We'll take it to the garbage dump and I don't know, it'll go away somewhere. I'm gonna have like all kinds of cool stuff. I got three bathrooms in my house with all kinds of access to all the water I want. Puget Sound starts here. No, that's my neighbor. She used to babysit my children when they were little. She's got two little dogs. They each make two little nice piles of poop. And I sometimes wonder if she actually carries with her in her little purse, maybe two plastic bags in case each of her small dogs make two little piles of poop. I don't know. She's just my neighbor. I've never really asked her that. Puget Sound starts here. No, that's a gutter. And that's a downspout, taking the water from the gutter down, down, down a pipe into another pipe somewhere through the neighborhood. It goes away. It's okay. But I'm a little irritated with my neighbor because he's got moss growing and it's unsightly in the neighborhood. So I'm suggesting to him some special treatment. It's like this great stuff that'll kill anything living. It'll definitely kill the moss on your roof. So if you spray that on and then any excess is okay because it gets caught in your gutter and goes down the downspout and away. So now the neighborhood looks a little bit better. Puget Sound starts here. No. Puget Sound's like ferry boats and ocean and the salmon and the salt water. This is a soccer field. Don't talk to me about Puget Sound, but I'm not quite sure how much fertilizer is put on this field or if they use weed and feed. And I'm not sure if it, when it rains, some of that fertilizer kind of roll, you know, soaks off into the uh, parking lot right next to it and goes down the, the storm drain. But I'd love to play soccer. I'd like to get into this field, but dang, there's a fence there I can't get through. I'm kind of like shaking the fence like a gorilla wanting to play soccer on that field, but it's locked. I don't have access. And then I'm looking at this chain link fence and I see up close it's galvanized. And the galvanized part is made from zinc. Oh, the zinc is a metal. That's really toxic because that begins to flake off and sit there on the, on the pavement, gets into the water when it rains and down the pipe somewhere. I don't know where it goes. Puget Sound starts here. It's so beautiful. I watched the school bus go by me in the parking lot and it had a little drop of oil, bing. And it rained that morning so the ground was a little bit moist. It's just like a poem was coming to me. It was so beautiful that way that when one little drop, tiny little drop of oil just whoo, dissipated, spread out there, sitting like rainbow colors. So I took a picture of it because I just think it needs to be my screensaver or something. Puget Sound starts here. No, it's just the parking lot. It's just one drop of oil. Thank goodness for the storm drain. It all is going to go down there. Cigarette butts, plastic, everything building up in the food chain gut. I don't have to think about it anymore because Puget Sound starts here. You recognize this. The Olympic Mountains to the west, the Cascade Mountains to the east, the whole basin that drains down from the steep ridgelines through the streams into the water of the rivers, out through the estuaries into the nearshore habitat, filling up the deep channels of Puget Sound. You can see Hood Canal looking like a fish hook. You can see down in the southern fingers of this saltwater body the city of Olympia where our state politicians are making important decisions on behalf of Puget Sound. You can see the port of Tacoma. You can see downtown Seattle. You can see Lake Washington north and south with a footprint island right in the middle. That's Mercer Island. Looks like a footprint in the middle of Lake Washington. And the next lake over to the east is Lake Sammamish. And you can see down at the southern tip of Lake Sammamish the city of Issaquah and to the northern tip of Lake Sammamish the city of Redmond. And we live here. Puget Sound is all of it. All of the landscape, all of the habits, everything drains downstream and ends up in the water body called Puget Sound. But the Puget Sound 
region, the ecosystem, starts at the Cascades. From snow caps to white caps, this is our environment. Always has been. People have adapted here and living sustainably for a long, long time. Each one of these icons represents a Native American village. Each icon represents maybe five or six longhouses. In each longhouse, there's 30 or 40 people. Your aunts, uncles, everyone lives together inside those longhouses. That's a village, about 200 people. Notice where they're living, all along the riverways. That's their transportation system. Their economic system's based on the riverways and the forest. They exchange goods and services among themselves. They respect the cycles of nature. They understand about zero waste. Been living that way for a long, long time, maybe 5,000 years, maybe since time immemorial. And this is what it looks like today. Yay for us, it's awesome. That's downtown Seattle with freeways and skyscrapers and office buildings and industry and great ideas. And yet there's a lot of hard services. There's rooftops and roads and driveways and sidewalks. It's a lot of hard surfaces. It used to look like this. Downtown Seattle, total blanket of forest. We could make our way through there. We knew the trails, the elk trails and the deer trails and the bear trails. They made the pathways. We just followed their footsteps down to the lake or to pick blueberries or to dig for roots. If we get a little closer, we can see our own watershed begin to take shape. Here's just the river bodies and the lake system. Take a moment to find yourself on this map. Where do you live? Where do you travel? Where do you shop? Where does your food come from? We can look at the same landscape in three dimensions. Now you can see the huge built up mountains of the Cascades and then the lowlands. You can see the floodplains of the rivers bringing the nutrients eroded from the mountains down into the valleys. And you can see all of the hills in Seattle and Bellevue and north and south, they're all north-south aligned. Why is that? The Ice Age came pushing down two million years ago, ground like a big mile-high bulldozer, stayed here for two million years, and then melted quite quickly. Within a couple thousand years, it melted back, and then it would freeze and come forward for 50 years, and it would melt back even further, then advance again a little bit. And that pushing and grinding plowed up big, long rows of gravel, and it left it there. Those are the hills of Seattle and Bellevue. This is so third grade. This is the water cycle. You know it. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation. But here's two new concepts. The precipitation falls on the landscape. The trees take it in. The roots soak it up. It infiltrates. It goes through the surface, but it does it slowly because there's so much vegetation. It infiltrates into the surface. Then it begins to percolate down until it meets the water table. Now, if it rains again for the next week, and it rains again after that, the water table might come up a little bit. And if it really rains a lot, you might have a soggy backyard or a soggy soccer field. That's because the water table's right near the surface, like a sponge that's filled up. And then the seasons change, there's less rain, and the water table goes back down, and it balances through the four seasons. That's the full water cycle, including what's happening underneath the ground. Now, it's a perfect place to build a city because you have access to the forest and the fresh water and the salmon coming back up that river. So your longhouse village starts up on that plateau, and then other kinds of settlement come other kinds of industry, and eventually you have Seattle sitting right there. Big city, it changes the whole thing. Sure, the rain still comes down, but now it hits all the hard surfaces in the city, like the rooftops and the roads and the freeways and the parking lots, the driveways, and it can't infiltrate. It can't work its way through the system. So it quickly moves across those hard surfaces and takes whatever toxins are on that surface with it quickly, concentrating it into the pipes which go into the streams like Washington or Puget Sound, bringing all that toxic load with it. It used to look like this, and now it looks like this. The question is, is it possible to build a city that behaves like a forest? Again, 
Can we come full circle? We can't take the city away and make a forest, but can we have the city behave like a forest? Is it possible to design a school campus that behaves like a forest, or a house, your home, an office building? Is it possible? The answer is yes. This is the greenest commercial office building on the planet. It's six stories, zero net energy, zero net water, nearly zero waste, very few toxins. It's in Seattle. You can go visit it. It's a great research project to look at the idea of super green building and protecting Puget Sound. We've done it before, the longhouse, zero net energy, zero net water, zero waste. We can do it again.